G'day guys, it's Kim here from the Time Slip Simulator and welcome to version 1.0.8. In this latest version we have a range of new features. Um, the main ones are updates to the way the interface works uh, and improvements in that area, plus two new playback tools, dial-in markers and the win indicator. Let's first start off with some of the improvements to the interface. One of the requests that we get quite often is to make the TSS a little easier to use and make sure that it remembers uh, previous selections. So that's exactly what we've done. So let's take this one for example here. I just want to show you how we've improved the interface in this version. So I just press simulate. And what you'll notice is that we can, like we used to be able to do, is turn the sound off for example. We can change the camera angles, we can change the lanes. Um, and now though, when we hit the time slip button and go back, when we go back to the simulation again, it's remembered as previous settings. So the sound is still off, the camera is still in the same position, uh, and uh, there's a bunch of other things with that we can do as well. So if I hit play now, one of the great new features is turn the sound back on, turn it off, we can pause, we can then change the speed while we're paused and then hit resume and now it's playing back at that speed. So one of the great things there is let's put it back to full speed. Oops, there we go. Change it to look down, view, resume, pause, switch to 16th speed and then resume, pause right at the finish line. Resume again. To full speed, zoom, sound on. So once again, if I go back to the time slip and go forward again, we're still in the same camera uh, angle, and the sound is on, and the speed is full. Uh, what we uh, we've also added a new camera angle, so I'll switch to that. We've got is this idea of the sideways camera angle. This is sort of looking directly at 90 degrees towards your opponent's lane. So I've hit play. Um, it gives us a good uh, reference point. Pause. I'll drop back to 16th speed. Resume. You get that real um, realistic view of your opponent as you're approaching the finish line. Yeah, so we've hit the finish line. Stop there. Uh, one of the other features that we've added is obviously what we just saw before was this new super slow mode. So now you can go down to 1 16th speed. I'll pause it, go back to full, resume, wait for my opponent to appear, pause, go to super slow mode, resume, and then we can watch our opponent as we both head towards the finish line. Hit resume, back to full speed, turn the sound off. I might just pause for a second. The other uh, addition that we've made now is you can hit the res race result uh, button at any time. So if I resume, let's replay that race so I can stop. It goes back to the start. I can hit play. But now, having, rather than having to wait, I can just simply press the race result button. I can see the actual race result screen without having to wait until the vehicles uh, actually finish. Uh, so at any time you can hit the race result, it doesn't matter. During the run, uh, before you even press start at the end of the run, it doesn't matter. So go back to the time slip. Now the next uh, function I want to show you is these two new tools that we've added. One is the, um, the idea of the dial-in marker. So now the dial-in marker is actually on the screen. So in this situation, let's pick a run. Um, actually, let's just generate a run to start with. So I'm going to choose an eighth mile run. Five seconds. Now the generate tool was added a, a while ago, but it allows you to put in scenarios and, and look at how a race might unfold. So let's say your opponent was dialed in at 5.25, you're dialed in at 6.25. You can use this tool to generate a time slip and then go and watch that race. But in this instance, we're just going to use it to demonstrate the, um, the dialing lines. Now, 
So that's actually the ET, so 5.25 in the left lane, 6.25 in the right lane. Let's say they're both off their dialing by a little bit. Let's say this guy is running uh, 522. He's got a dialing of 522, so he's three hundreds over. And this guy is 523, no, 623, sorry, and he's two hundreds uh, over his dialing, because that's his ET there. Let's simulate. I'm going to change to the top view, because that's the best oops, that's the best view. So I uh, remember the track position on and off button here. That also gets remembered now between runs. So if you come back, that will be switched on. Um, let's play. Press play and let's just watch this unfold. Just want to pause for a second. So pause. See that pink line there? That pink line represents the dial. So at the moment, um, the vehicle in the right lane is actually uh, behind the dial in line. So he's uh, not going to break out at this point. Uh, and if we look, we'll just zoom a little bit further, look at the other lane, pause. And you can see how in the left lane, uh, the racer is certainly behind their dial at this point. And we know from what we did with the time, so that's 200 behind. And I think the right lane was 100 behind. Let's slow it down a bit so you can see it unfold towards the finish line. We'll zoom. And you can see how they remain behind their respective dialing lines with the race result. So the great thing about the dialing line is you can see if you're in front or behind or, uh, behind it. So uh, whether you're on a uh, uh, on a non-breakout or a breakout pass. So let's go and change those figures to make it a breakout pass this time. So rather than being uh, 522 dial in and running 525. Let's make it a 527. So, in this instance, this the left lane is going to go under by 200s. And we can play. Oh, better set the speed back to full speed. Once again, that's it, remembering the speeds. Now you see in this instance that the left lane is actually in front of the dial, which re represents the fact that they're going to break out. And there you go. The great thing about dialing mark is obviously it gives you a really good view of track position and uh, where you and your opponent are, are compared to your dialings. Now you can enter your normal time slips and when you run that, we'll choose rather than one that I've generated, let's choose a real time slip. Um, Uh, this one here. So we'll zoom, simulate here. So the right lane was breaking out by quite a lot. So we play. Just pause it, switch lanes. Slow it down. And you can see how the right lane is considerably further in front. So that racer was holding quite a number. And we look at the right lane. And this particular racer is well behind their dial at this point. Pause, speed it up, resume. Let them get close. Pause, switch back to 16th speed. Maybe let's look. Okay. Resume. Was look from the top view, and you can see here that uh, the right lane is certainly well in front of their dialing, whereas the left lane is, is tightening it right up at this point. There you go, and that was a real time slip, so it shows you how much the other guy was holding. And look at the race result, and we can see that he obviously broke out, and the margin of victory was about. 0.5 or well, 6 inches, thereabouts. And now if we go back to one more thing. Now, during the um, playing back those dialing uh, examples, you would have seen a green box uh, that appeared on the screen. That's the win indicator that which we've recently added. I'll just go back to one of these time sets we had before. Now, what the, the win indicator tells you is where your front wheels need to be to win the race. Um, so not only can you look at your existing time slips, 
and uh, check out where you were positioned as compared to your opponent who was in the uh, winning position, if you like. Uh, you can obviously put in, uh, generate your own runs and try out different scenarios to see how you might use that particular feature to see if you needed to back into your opponent or if you couldn't catch them, therefore you needed to stand on the brakes, um, that type of thing. So looking at this example, let's have a look at an example where neither racer is, uh, is breaking out. So um, let's say this guy has dialed off a bit. So he dialed a 522 to run 525. And this guy dialed a 623 and went 625. So 300's over and 200's over. So let's simulate that. Press play. So what you see here is these green, um, oops, back to full speed. What you see is these green boxes on the, uh, on the track. They represent the win uh, wind indicator. So if as long as the right hand vehicle's front wheels are in that green box, they're in the winning position. So if we switch to the left lane, we'll see at the moment that he's not in the winning position, obviously. The right lane is. He's not breaking out, but he's in front of his opponent. That's the basic principle here. And you can see that the right lane was in control of that race, um, across the stripe, one hundredth in front, um, or almost two feet, and the win indicator is indicating that his front wheels were in that space. So he could have backed in a bit to his opponent, and that's what that green box represents. Let's look at a different scenario. Go back to the time slip. Uh, in this instance. They are one is breaking out and one isn't. So in this left lane, the dial to 524 and they go 525. In the right lane, however, the dial is 627 they go 625. Let's simulate that. We'll turn the sound on for this one. Press play. Just want to check one thing out. Pause. In this instance, you can see that the right lane is in front of their dialing. So they're outside of their, their win indicator. So they need to be behind that line to be in a winning position at this point in the race. Now, if we change to the, I'll bring them, get them a little closer. Pause. Okay. Now in the left lane, we can see that their front wheels is inside the wind decay. So at the moment, they are winning the race. They're not breaking out, whereas their opponent is. But you also can see in front of the dial-in marker here, the pink line, the green win indicator extends forward. Now this is how much your opponent is breaking out by. So he can be, he can break out but still win because he'll be breaking out by less than his opponent. And resume, brace result. And you can see that played out here. The only way that the right lane could have won was to back into the win indicator here. So they need to be not breaking out and in front of their opponent. So there's that tiny little window here. Whereas in the left lane, as long as they don't break out, they're gonna win in this situation, but they could even be closer to their opponent and still win. So they could be breaking out by less and still win. So obviously you can run through various scenarios. Let's choose one where they're both breaking out now as a, as a third um, scenario to look at. Just happened to have one that I prepared earlier. So here we have a racer that is dialed in 527, goes 525, and the opposite lane is 628, and goes 625, breaking out by 200 in the left lane, breaking out by 300 in the right lane. Press simulate. We'll play. We'll let them get a bit closer together. Pause. Okay, once again we see that both lanes are breaking out. They're in front of their dialing markers. However, the left lane is breaking out by less, and the right lane is obviously breaking out by more. But as you can see, they're both breaking out. That's why both dial-ins, win indicator in each lane extends past their dial-in. That's the, you know, that's how much their opponent is breaking out by. Resume, pause it, just slide down a bit. So you can see that the left lane is still in a winning position. Resume. Go and look at the race result. 
Now, <clears throat> it would have been a pretty tight one, but see, the, the right lane still had to back in a little bit to their opponent. Or he would have had to have tried to dump them and drop below his, um, his breakout line, his dial in marker, sorry. So there were the two options. He could have backed in slightly or dumped them at the, at the finish line to get behind his, his dial in marker. So there you have it. That's a brief introduction to what the wind indicator and dial in markers can do and how they can help you with your racing. I will be producing a bit of a strategy guide later about how to use these features in greater depth. Um, just you know, creating some scenarios, looking at different uh, track positions, and looking at um, uh, using the check for back off option and things like that to try and represent your um, your real time slips, and then have a think about how you may change the outcome of a race by putting yourself in a better position. Uh, once again, thank you so much. That's uh, an introduction to version 1.08. Um, if you'd like to download your free trial, simply visit timeslipsim.com and from there you can get your Windows PC or Android version. Uh, for existing subscribers, you can also go to timeslipsim.com, go to your account, log in, and there'll be a new download for you um, to go and get. Once you download it, you just run the installer and it will copy over the previous version. Uh, as simple as that. Any questions, just email kim at timeslipsim.com and I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Cheers.